Welcome to Taiwan Talks, covering the latest global news from a Taiwan perspective. I'm Albert Chiu. On January 13, 2024, Taiwan is scheduled to hold its presidential election. The list of potential candidates consists of William Lai from DPP, Ho Yo Yi from the KMT, Ke Wen Zhe from the TPP, and Fox Fang founder Terry Guo. Given the importance of international politics for Taiwan, we delve into the diplomatic policies of the presidential hopefuls. Joining us today are Huang Kui Bo, Associate Professor of Diplomacy at the National Zhengzhou University. He was also former KMT Deputy Secretary General. Andrea Yang, Democratic Progressive Party, Deputy Secretary General. Finally, Leonard Zhao, Ajang Professor at, of uh, National Tsinghua University, Taiwan People's Party, Mainland China Affairs Committee Chair and a former ROC Ambassador to the Kingdom of Eswatini. A very warm welcome to all on the show. Undoubtedly, uh, the issue of China will take center stage in the, in the discourse of the presidential candidates as they outline their diplomatic policies. Among Taiwanese, there exists a spectrum of opinions with some deeply concerned about China's aggressive actions, viewing them as a source of apprehension, while others may find a lure in tapping into the vast Chinese markets. Let's start by discussing each candidate's policy toward China. Uh, I guess the first uh, question will go to uh, DSG Yang. Uh, so, you know, w w what's your uh, understanding of uh, William Lai's stance on China in yes. general? Uh, Vice President uh, Lai has claimed many, many times that uh, his future policies in terms of cross strait issues and you know, uh, national security issues are completely in line with President Tsai's four commitments. Under, on top of this, there's uh, recently he has a, an essay on uh, Wall Street Journal mm -hmm. uh, stated very clear on his uh, four uh, pillars mm -hmm. towards uh, the future political developments in, in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. So the solid uh, propositions are, and also a coherent proposition um, in line with the current government's um, policies. It's very clear that we are looking for a peace and s stability mm -hmm. and also security uh, towards the regional peace mm -hmm. and development. And without peace and stability, there won't be uh, economic mm -hmm. prosperity. Mm -hmm. But there's a precondition that all the negotiations with China and our approaches to China would need to uh, take into account of Taiwanese people's dignity. Mm -hmm. There has to be equal dialogues mm -hmm. and open conversations mm -hmm. to determine uh, 23 million people's future. Mm -hmm. uh, Min, uh, Taiwanese government has uh, made it really clear that mm -hmm. we welcome uh, the uh, constructive mm -hmm. and effective dialogues with mm -hmm. the uh, Beijing government. Uh, but they would st um, because of the historical complications, mm -hmm. then we would need to uh, find a way mm -hmm. to uh, encounter the future challenges. Mm -hmm. And it's not just between Taiwan and China, mm -hmm. but it's the uh, Indo-Pacific as a whole, okay. as a challenge. All right, Professor Huang, uh, about uh, Hou Youyi, uh, what's his stance uh, to your understanding uh, on China? Yeah, my personal understanding about Hou's policy towards mainland China is that his mainland China policy would be based on three Ds. Mm -hmm. you know, the first D refers to defense. Mm -hmm. That is, we need uh, greater consolidation of self-defense mm -hmm. so that we can defend ourselves if mm -hmm. the PLA is coming towards Taiwan. And the second D is democracy. That mm -hmm. is, we need mm -hmm. to endorse our democracy, safeguard our democracy mm -hmm. under the sovereignty of the Republic of China. Mm -hmm. And the third D means mm -hmm. development. Mm -hmm. At the core of it, that is uh, the Economic Cooperation Framework Agreement, mm -hmm. ECFA, mm -hmm. signed and coined in 2010 mm -hmm. when uh, Ma Ma Ying-jeou mm -hmm. was the president. Mm -hmm. So at the core, it was the economic prosperity mm -hmm. that supports the vibrant democracy in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. And also, mm -hmm. I believe that Mr. Ho mm -hmm. also endorsed uh, the fact that you know, both sides of the Taiwan Strait, you know, had different definition of China. Mm -hmm. And of course, Ms. Ho's China is Republic of China. Mm -hmm. But he also acknowledged that Beijing, Beijing authorities mm -hmm. 
refers to PRC mm -hmm. as Beijing's One China. Mm -hmm. But he acknowledged there is such a difference, but we actually shove the difference. Now we have to look at the commonalities mm -hmm. so that we can move on. Okay, uh, Ambassador Zhao, um, as, as far as you know, uh, what are the TPP, uh, you know, led by uh, the former Taipei Mayor Ke Wenzhe, <coughs> his stance on the China? Well, I would like to, uh, you know, begin uh, mm. with my uh, observation that, you know, everybody's talking about China, mm. okay, for the, uh, but the TPP, also, uh, you know, Mr. Ke himself, mm -hmm. will try to emphasize the importance of separating mm -hmm. the cross-strait policy from the electoral campaigns, mm -hmm. all right? Okay, in, nevertheless, when everybody's talking about China, this and China, that, like KMT and our TPP friends, that uh, I would like to uh, still like to uh, share the, with the audience mm -hmm. that is uh, to put in a, you know, in a nutshell, okay, uh, Chairman Ke Wenzhe's uh, policy, and, mm -hmm. and we talked about that you know, just uh, the other day mm -hmm. with the, you know, the European Union's uh, representative in Taipei, that we can, uh, you know, sum up with a, uh, Five uh, mutual, <coughs> five mutual, to put in layman's terms. Mm -hmm. Five mutual is what? Mutual uh, awareness mm -hmm. and mutual appreciation mm -hmm. and mutual respect, mm -hmm. mutual cooperation, mm -hmm. and finally, very importantly, that mutual empathy. Mm -hmm. Empathy. So, uh, in other words, uh, and uh, I think uh, Mayor Chair, you know, uh, when he was the mayor of Taipei City, mm -hmm. it's well known, you know, the, that he's uh, always uh, he spared no effort mm -hmm. in trying to uh, continually conducting the, the, you know, the dual city, double city mm -hmm. conference forum between Shanghai and Taipei. Mm -hmm. Although he has uh, been bombarded with a lot of criticism mm -hmm. from both parties, you know, in the Taipei City Council, mm -hmm. but he still say that communication is always more important. Mm -hmm. Then confrontation mm -hmm. and the dialogue mm -hmm. is the name of the game. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, uh, that re, you know remain undoubtful that uh, Mr. K is for uh, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Ke, Ke Wenzhe. Mm -hmm. He's for the uh, for mutual communication, mutual dialogue, and mutual peaceful, you know, uh, coexistence mm -hmm. in this part of the world. And mm -hmm. also, it serves the best interest mm -hmm. of the people of Taiwan. Mm -hmm. Also, the best interest of the whole region, mm -hmm. if not the whole world. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, I mean, it's easier to say uh, than, than doing it. Uh, we know that, on the other hand, of the spectrum, there's a superpower called the United States. Uh, my next question goes to uh, any one of you who is interested. Uh, what does U.S. skepticism mean and imply in the context of U.S.-China, uh, I mean, Taiwan-U.S. relation? What, which candidates, potentially, to your perspective, harbor U.S. skepticism? Uh, maybe uh, DSG Yang. Yes, um, it's very surprising that U.S. skepticism came up as a topic mm -hmm. because um, what is there to be spectacle about? Mm -hmm. That would be the question to ask. Mm -hmm. uh, we believe that uh, we can see that China and, and U.S., the two uh, strong superpowers, mm -hmm. uh, their rivalry in Indo-Pacific, it's a, uh, a long history campaign. But uh, mainstream Taiwanese people would believe that U.S., uh, doesn't matter. The uh, we, we share the same value system mm -hmm. and freedom, democracy, and all that. Mm -hmm. And also, we share the same um, economic interest as mm -hmm. well. So the uh, trade partnership, has the strong trade partnership between mm -hmm. Taiwan and, and, and U.S. Mm -hmm. are very solid. And the recent 21st century initiative uh, also proved that the two countries are moving towards a productive mm -hmm. and constructive. Uh, economic partnership. Mm -hmm. It's very important that we realize that uh, U.S. and Taiwan are sharing same common goals mm -hmm. of the, uh, the our national interest mm -hmm. as well. So this it, it is actually pointless to mm -hmm. to talk about uh, whether pe whether people in Taiwan are uh, having doubts about U.S. intention mm -hmm. towards uh, Taiwan's benefit. And of course, this um, after the Second World War en ended, uh, U.S. is um, implementing uh, and, and try to help other countries right, to build right. their democracies. Mm. So it is important that we realize that this uh, skepticism uh, narrative is based on uh, is based on uh, no much um, proof mm -hmm. on, on, on this right. um, issue. But, but do you, I mean, which <coughs> candidate do you think that you know kind of probably harbor this skepticism? 
uh, KMT candidates or TV candidates or you, you think that's uh, you know n none of the candidates that belong to this I kind think of uh, all the candidates will need to have a very clear statement towards mm -hmm. their approach towards US and, and China policies mm -hmm. uh, DPP has <coughs> a very strong um, understanding of our partnership with with the US mm -hmm. KMT on the other hand uh, trying to uh, show or try to demonstrate mm -hmm. their capability of mm -hmm. uh, open a dialogue with with the, with China. Mm -hmm. So it, it is a bit uh, dodgy for mm -hmm. them to uh, to answer the question, mm -hmm. but they're putting a lot of efforts to clarify that they are not pro mm -hmm. China only, but okay. they also try to maintain a, a okay. stable relation with, with right. the U.S. And Mr. Zhang. Well, I'd like to say that, you know, the, uh, the saying goes, it takes two to tango, mm -hmm. all right? So I don't think that any one of the three candidates is harboring any like uh, you know U.S. skepticism mm -hmm. thought. Mm -hmm. On the contrary, if I may say that, in the recent days, mm -hmm. it's kind of a certain uh, <laughs> uh, William Lai skepticism, mm -hmm. a sentiment from uh, from the United States. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, you know the Financial Times mm -hmm. uh, they came up with is a report as you know that. Right, I don't right. want I don't want to go any further. Mm -hmm. But I I like to say that the the, the Taiwan U.S. bilateral relations has mm -hmm. been you know. Uh, undergoing uh, su some ups and downs mm -hmm. you know, period over the past you know, half, a, half a century. Mm -hmm. Okay, we used to have a very strong you know, ally ties mm -hmm. between our two countries, two mm -hmm. governments, and two peoples. Mm -hmm. And until uh, about 40 years ago, mm -hmm. that's the Uncle Sam, the Washington DC, that you know, broke up the relations, mm -hmm. the diplomatic ties with Taiwan. That did a heavy blow to the Taiwanese sentiment. Mm -hmm. So I think at this moment that, how come this kind of a US skepticism mm -hmm. per se, you know, thought, you know, it came up I think maybe the U.S. should take some into uh, you know a thought about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it, it's not going from any. It might be going from somewhere. So I think it takes two to tango. It's not only for Taiwan people. We are friendly, basically, mm -hmm. generally with the, with the, okay. with Washington. But it's up to them. Okay, uh, Professor uh, Huang, do you want to add up to yes, this? I, I just want to add mm -hmm. that uh, you know I, I think it's very good to see the Taipei Office Director of the American Institute in Taiwan mm -hmm. said a few weeks ago that we need to ne distinguish between U.S. skepticism mm -hmm. and uh, anti-U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, which means, I, I think, uh, you know, these U.S. skepticism in Taiwan society, if mm -hmm. any, mm -hmm. uh, is natural and mm -hmm. it should be protected, protected under this freedom of speech. Mm -hmm. And that is the key point mm -hmm. made by the Taipei Office Director mm -hmm. at AIT. Right. Opposing U.S. Mm -hmm. and U.S. skepticism, mm -hmm. we, of course we need to know there is a big difference. Mm -hmm. And not to mention, you know, speaking to the Beijing authorities mm -hmm. for the peace and stability in the Taiwan Strait mm -hmm. is something that everyone should have done. Okay. Uh, in fact, uh, the ART director, uh, she, she said that, um, she said that uh, in the open statements that uh, uh, U.S. skepticism should be protected as a freedom of speech. What about Japan? Are there any uh, outstanding uh, issues between Taiwan and Japan? Uh, well, uh, plus the late former Japanese Prime Minister uh, Shinzo Abe once stated, a Taiwan's contingency is a contingency for Japan. So in your opinion, how does each candidate view uh, this statement? Uh, maybe KMT first? Yeah. You know, I just speak for myself. Uh -huh. So okay. this mm -hmm. Abe statement, mm -hmm. you know, after he stepped down as Prime Minister, uh, was new. Mm -hmm. So that caused a lot of debates and discussions in Taiwan. Mm -hmm. Uh, to my best knowledge, mm -hmm. and based on what Mr. Ho has expressed in mm -hmm. the past few weeks, mm -hmm. I think he would say that if he is going to win in the upcoming presidential election, mm -hmm. then there will, be a, there will be no Taiwan contingency. Mm -hmm. So there will be no Japan's uh, contingency because he being President of the Republic of China mm -hmm. will bring peace and stability to the Taiwan Strait. Mm -hmm. Does that mean uh, if uh, William Lai got elected, uh, there will be a con Taiwan's contingency? What's your take on this? Well, we, 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 we don't think that would happen. But mm -hmm. uh, as we can see on the news, that when uh, Vice President Lai attended uh, former pri Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's uh, mm -hmm. funeral, mm -hmm. it showed a very strong, not just um, uh, partnership between Taiwan and Japan, mm -hmm. and also a strong uh, personal friendship as mm -hmm. well. And lately, uh, Ms. Abe uh, mm. also had a meeting with, with um, Vice President Lai. Mm -hmm. And all this um, very close and trust mm -hmm. between Taiwan and, and Japan, uh, we, can, we can see that there's concrete 
concrete mm -hmm. um, actions. Mm -hmm. And Taiwan and Japan, uh, in a big bigger picture, mm -hmm. we see that it's also related in the regional um, peace instability. Mm -hmm. uh, we can traditionally, the first Chen Island, mm -hmm. then um, the first question we need to ask, uh, why would this first Chen Island be important? Mm -hmm. It's the, the threat coming from China. Mm -hmm. And if the, the question we should ask is whether China is trustworthy, mm -hmm. and why would this countries formed in, in line together mm -hmm. to deter China's rise mm -hmm. and also possible potential military expansion. Mm -hmm. That's the uh, fundamental question that we need to ask. Uh, Taiwan and Japan traditionally have a very close relationship, mm -hmm. and historically as well. Mm -hmm. But in the future, how do we view China and uh, Japan and Taiwan, mm -hmm. and perhaps Philippines, Australia's mm -hmm. role together to uh, develop a, a better uh, mm -hmm. regional economic mm -hmm. interests. Mm -hmm. That would be the question to ask. Then, as, as a lot of economists already predicted, mm -hmm. there would be an economic re recession mm -hmm. okay. in, in China. Mm -hmm. So that would be the, uh, the concern of the entire mm -hmm. uh, world leaders, mm -hmm. where China is going and what is China doing. Mm -hmm. That would be the uh, the, the fundamental concern. Okay, uh, and Mr. Zhao, uh, yeah. <coughs> Chairman Guo doesn't seem to have a lot of, uh, you know, uh, history uh, with, with the comments on Japan. Uh, as far as your understanding, I mean, wh wh what's his philosophy about Japan? Well, <coughs> talking about history, uh -huh. uh, Chairman Guo himself, you know, he used to be able to speak Japanese language. Mm -hmm. You know, he both of his parents, mm -hmm. their native language of, you know, Mr. Mr. Her parent. Japanese. That mm -hmm. was during the Japanese occupation time. Mm -hmm. So uh, in the childhood, you know, uh, the childhood, Mr. Ke Wenzhe, mm -hmm. he spoke, you know, Japanese very fluently. Mm -hmm. But until recently, I think uh, not the although uh, not many statements from uh, from uh, Mr. Ke Wenzhe, mm -hmm. but himself, mm -hmm. uh, he has been uh, finishing a very successful visit to mm -hmm. Japan not mm -hmm. too long ago, mm -hmm. where he met uh, with a lot of you know uh, now quite a few Japanese ranking officials or formal ranking officials, mm -hmm. and they also have some good talks mm -hmm. and very fruitful, okay, exchange of the opinions. Mm -hmm. So in the word that uh, Chairman Ge is for a very close, you know, uh, US, I'm sorry, Taiwan and Japan relations, that goes beyond without saying that. And also, you know, uh, there other uh, the Kirby's, uh, you know, presidency in the future, mm -hmm. definitely he will, you know, will commit himself mm -hmm. to even closer and more sustainable relations between, between Taiwan and Japan. The CCP continues to deter Taiwan from participating in international organizations, even apolitical ones, such as the WHA. When President Ma was in office, both sides agreed on the idea that Taiwan and China belong to so-called One China. This was called the 1992 consensus. At that time, Taiwan could join the WHA as an observer. First, uh, I'm curious about uh, your observation regarding each candidate's attitude toward the 1992 consensus. Maybe Professor Huang, you can go first. You know, uh, the 1992 consensus refers to the fact that the two sides of the strait back in the 1991, 1992 mm -hmm. uh, agreed implicitly that mm -hmm. they differed on the definition of one China. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, on the Taipei side, we said the one China is, of course, the Republic of China, and we've been endorsing the sovereignty of the Republic of China since day one. Uh, so this 92 consensus, you know, now it's been more than 30 years, and mm -hmm. some people say it's been old enough. Let's mm -hmm. get something new. Mm -hmm. You know, I do not uh, disagree with that, but you know, what I am really concerned about is that whether or not we can have something new that can really replace the 1992 consensus, mm -hmm. and that can, um, at the same time bring peace and stability back to the Taiwan Strait. Mm -hmm. I, I think, uh, so the spir spirit and principle mm -hmm. of the 1992 consensus, that is shelving the disputes, mm -hmm. seeking commonalities, mm -hmm. and starting from the functional cooperation issues. Mm -hmm. I think these are so important that cross relations can finally back to normalcy. Mm -hmm. Well, the, the, the thing is uh, President Xi Jinping doesn't take the 92 consensus as uh, one country, but two different interpretation, That's right? Not his uh, definition. Right. So, so I mean, but but this is would be a challenging for people who believe in this notion. So maybe you, you can add up uh, later. But uh, DSG Yang, so what's your take on this? Ninety-two consensus is a hurdle between Taiwan and, and China, and it, it is a consensus with 
multiple versions mm -hmm. as time goes. And yeah. as Albert has mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, Xi Jinping's version of 92 consensus is one country, two system. He mm -hmm. made it really clear. Mm -hmm. So this consensus was not accepted. Mm -hmm. It will never be accepted by people who pursue mm -hmm. freedom and democracy in Taiwan. So mm -hmm. this is thus a consensus needs to be uh, put away mm -hmm. and we, we go for something else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Ambassador Zhao, so yeah. what about <coughs> uh, Kirby's idea about 90 consensus? Well, I'd like to, uh, you know, first, you know, say that the, uh, the 1992 consensus has been, uh, uh, you know, understanding or, you know, interpretation mm -hmm. over 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. Okay, over 30, I think. So the time has changed. Mm -hmm. So any, any important historical understanding has to comply with, uh, with the change of the times. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why uh, Ke Wenzhe, he never said he is objective to any uh, consensus, but he is not say that we should continue favor this uh, so-called consensus. Mm -hmm. but like, you know, uh, you know uh, the KMT's idea, similarly, Mr. Ke Wenzhe is of the opinion that this uh, uh, is about time for us to, to consider advocating for a new consensus mm -hmm. to replace the old consensus, mm -hmm. the new one to replace the old one as the basis, a new basis for the cross trade relations. Mm -hmm. And also, Mr. Kerr is strongly, uh, you know, suggesting that the uh, what matters, what concerns more is that this new consensus mm -hmm. should be formulated through an open and transparent mm -hmm. dialogue. Mm -hmm. So that's the, mm -hmm. that's the his key point. The DPP candidate William Lai, who is pre uh, presently uh, leading in a pause made a statement during an event that when Taiwan's president can enter the White House, the political goal that we are pursuing will have been achieved, according to a report by Financial Times. However, U.S. officials have asked Taiwan to clarify the presidential front-runner's remarks about White House visit. So, uh, DSG Yang, do you think that U.S. does not want Taiwan to associate itself too closely with U.S. or, at the very least, refrain from doing so in a very explicit manner? Well, we believe that U.S.-Taiwan relations is going on a very steady path. Mm -hmm. And President Joe Paulus already released a uh, response towards Financial Times' report. We did not receive much concern or attention from the uh, Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. high-level politicians. But this is the uh, 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 something we try to take a soft approach mm -hmm. towards uh, our, our diplomacy with U.S. Mm -hmm. and other countries. We are not trying to be provocative. Mm -hmm. We're not trying to be surprising. Mm -hmm. So this is what uh, the entire White House statement that I don't think it raised much confusion mm -hmm. of what we try to uh, state to the public mm -hmm. and also to Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. The uh, AIT officials or uh, the Washington DC officials are fully aware of what we try to make to uh, state. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, Professor Huang, do you think it's reckless for uh, VP Lai to say that? Uh, you know, I, I think you know it's really uh, William Lai's you know, business to clarify what he said mm -hmm. about you know entering the White House in the, in the capacity of Taiwan president. Mm -hmm. I think you know the U.S. might have such a doubt about him. Uh, because you know he has stated uh, a few times, especially when he was premier mm -hmm. at the legislative yuan, that uh, you know he is a pragmatic practitioner mm -hmm. for Taiwan independence. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that caused some concern from mm -hmm. Washington mm -hmm. because Washington doesn't want to see any bold move of Taiwan independence that would trigger this you know very tra uh, fragile mm -hmm. stability in the Taiwan Strait. Mm -hmm. And that is why in, in the Financial Times and from what I've heard from my Washington DC friends, you know, there is some doubt about William Lai, but I think he's making every effort to clarify that he is not you know, that kind of president the US doesn't want. So uh, Ambassador, do you think this is stimulating uh, sentiment, uh, you know, kind of a concerns among the Washingtonians? Well, <coughs> I would like to uh, quote a very uh, you know well-known American saying, mm -hmm. uh, which goes like, uh, "Too close for comfort," mm -hmm. you know. <laughs> so of course, a Taiwanese we always like to get close to to American, you know. After you know so many uh, years, always we've been so, so close between our two peoples. I think at this point, very crucial moment during the campaign, you know, a period that uh, 
of course, you have to, you can get close to your you know uh, you know most important friend in the world, but not to an extent where that might embarrass, okay, or confuse mm -hmm. the United States, mm -hmm. you know, uh, uh, to run a certain risk, mm -hmm. you know, of their national interest, particularly in dealing with China at mm -hmm. this point, when the U.S. obviously is trying to uh, uh, take approach of the so-called you know, semi rapprochement mm -hmm. with Beijing. Mm -hmm. So I think always U.S. is always very sensitive, very sensitive to any kind of statement like that. Mm -hmm. So I think that personally, okay, okay that the you know, William Lai better be careful next time. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, DSG, yeah, really quick to respond to, to that. Well, I, I can uh. assure that the dialogues between um, U.S. and, and uh, Taiwan, mm -hmm. our uh, cooperation and relations th does not change mm -hmm. on, on, the, on well, because of this statement. The trust has been softly built um, for, for years. Mm -hmm. Then on, uh, we are on the right uh, trajectory. Mm -hmm. Then this statement does not jeopardize the mutual relations. Mm -hmm. Okay. Jason Shi, senior fellow of Harvard Kennedy School, spoke earlier to Carmen Lucillo, fellow of Yale Law School on balancing support for Taiwan without provoking China and concerns over China's posture in the Indo-Pacific. Let's take a look. It seems that U.S. has been um, rallying up its alliance efforts in Asia-Pacific region, including Japan and South Korea. We've seen more and more interactions among the allies itself. Um, in terms of uh, relationship with China, how would this affect uh, China's uh, posturing on the U.S. and its allies, um, including Taiwan. So uh, the United States has longstanding relations with allies in the Pacific, uh, especially, as you, as you mentioned, Japan, South Korea, the Philippines, and, and other nations. And so there's nothing particularly new about the United States having alliances um, in the Pacific. And, and of course, those alliances have been long longstanding and uh, have worked together on areas of, of common concern for decades, uh, including gaining free and open tr transportation throughout um, the East China Sea, the South China Sea, the Pacific, etc. And of course, with particularly when it comes to South Korea and Japan, the United States have, has worked closely with them on, on regional security issues, uh, particularly concerns about North Korea and increasingly China. And I think the sort of growing mutual concern about China amongst the United States, Japan, South Korea, and other countries in the region is not just about the United States and, and sort of the Biden administration's push to, 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 to quote unquote, convince allies to be more concerned about China. I think countries in the region are more concerned about China for their own reasons and for actions that the Chinese government has taken uh, lately in, 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 in the region. In a recent Financial Times article, um, Lai Qingde, the vice president of Taiwan, was reportedly uh, alleged that he claimed that his, his final, auto, Taiwan's ultimate goal is for the president to be able to walk into the White House. FT's article um, mentioned that the White House pressed Lai to clarify his comments. I was curious, what, what are your views on this? Would U.S. government would go so far as asking a uh, Taiwan's presidential candidate to clarify a campaign language, or it's something that U.S. is really concerned? I think the Biden administration is 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 concerned. The the United States government, so the the president and previous administrations have a long-standing policy of not formally inviting Taiwanese government officials to visit the White House or to visit other sort of seats of executive power in in the United States. And and that that's a long-standing policy. And I think the Biden administration is concerned that uh, Vice President Lai, in the course of his candidacy, is playing with fire. Is is you know, using the United States government or or risking um, something potentially very controversial and dangerous with 
China for the sake of a campaign stunt. And so I think the Biden administration definitely wants to make sure that that's not what's happening. And I think the, the Biden administration finds itself in a relatively precarious position because on the one hand, I think they do want to support Taiwan, but they want to do so in a way that is sustainable, in a way that is helpful, in a way that builds Taiwan's resiliency and that does not needlessly provoke China. I also think the Biden administration has to be aware of how Congress will react to anything that the administration does. Um, and of course, Congress right now is very supportive of Taiwan. But similarly, I would hope that both Congress and the Biden administration uh, find ways to support Taiwan in a way that is, again, sustainable and that builds Taiwan's resilience over time and that doesn't just needlessly provoke China. All the questions you've asked today are all sort of related to a common theme, which is how how to do that, how, how, to, how to maintain Taiwan's sense of resiliency in the current moment. Uh, and I think that's also relevant to the first question you asked when it comes to sort of the role that other countries in the region that are allies of the United States, like Japan and South Korea, and, and how they sort of fit into this cross-strait picture. I think each of these countries has very solid reasons to support Taiwan, but it's important to, to do so in a smart and sustainable way. And that, at the end of the day, turns on Taiwan itself and the Taiwanese people and the extent to which they are committed to, to, to maintaining the resiliency of their democratic system. And of course, it, it's also dependent on the leadership in Taiwan and how Taiwan's leaders sort of encourage their own people to, to defend their, their system and work you know, internationally in a way that, again, builds Taiwan's resilience in a sustainable, long-term manner. Senior fellow Lucido uh, mentioned one great point uh, is that the U.S. goal is always ultimately to, to maintain Taiwan's resilience. So now let's talk about Taiwan's major in preparation for regional conflict. The Thai administration has made the decision to extend conscription to one year duration. In addition, the Ministry of National Defense has put forth a three plus one plan aiming to enable conscripts to complete their university studies within three years and subsequently serve in the military for one year. In contrast, KMT candidate Ho Yo Yi asserted that the DPP's action have intensified cross-trade tensions leading to the necessity of extending military service as an inevitable choice. Uh, so, Professor, could you uh, provide us with an overview of uh, uh, basically the KMT's uh, view on this uh, policy? Yeah. To my best knowledge, mm -hmm. yes, Mr. Ho said that mm -hmm. uh, uh, the DPP that walked away from the political foundation between the two sides mm. uh, has led to the uh, instability in mm. the Taiwan Strait, which then causing uh, the extension of military service mm -hmm. from four months mm -hmm. to a year. Mm -hmm. That's what he said a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And also, he said, you know, such an extension without appropriate, appropriate uh, you know, conditions that applies will be unfair to women right. in college mm -hmm. because only men in college who are willing to go to the military service earlier mm -hmm. can enjoy the three plus one. That is three years in college, one year in the military service. Mm -hmm. But women need to you know, spend four years, you know, even they would like to speed up their study mm -hmm. in college. So that's another point Mr. Ho made a few weeks ago. And I, I, I do think that you know, uh, Mr. Ho's arguments make sense because he said he would like to shorten the military service if he becomes president mm -hmm. and if cross relations become calm and stable. Mm -hmm. you know, he has two conditions. That is one, he wins. Two, mm -hmm. cross relations now returns to normalcy, mm -hmm. then he's going to announce such a big policy change. Mm -hmm. But if none of it's, if these two conditions are not met, mm -hmm. he's not going to make announcements mm -hmm. that he supports right. the shortening of military service. Okay, uh, DSG Yang, uh, do you think this policy is still ongoing? Yes, it is. Um, we believe uh, in the four pillar um, proposition of Vice President Lai's recent uh, statement. Mm -hmm. uh, 
build up Taiwan's self-defense uh, de deterrence mm -hmm. is strongly important mm -hmm. and it's significant that we continue on this uh, policy mm -hmm. and it's supported by many other countries all the neighbor countries are increasing their defense budget mm -hmm. this is the effect then Taiwan we have a threatened neighbor China then we need to be self prepared for self defense mm -hmm. so s it is strongly important mm -hmm. s that we build up our military capa uh, cap capacities mm -hmm. and capabilities mm -hmm. through uh, trainings and through uh, I better equipments mm -hmm. then this is the uh, uh, a very I existing policy mm -hmm. and we'll continue to do so mm -hmm. and based on what's TPP's defense policy well, uh, <coughs> again, I'm, I can speak for myself that mm -hmm. the, uh, the um, I don't want to repeat mm -hmm. or re-emphasize the issue of the, the so-called Taiwan Strait tension, mm -hmm. as has been mentioned by our, my friends here. Mm -hmm. So I would like to uh, emphasize that, the, you know, uh, of course, it's mm -hmm. always important, as the American friend mentioned earlier, that we ha you have to defend, mm -hmm. you know, your system in dealing with this kind of situation. And what is more important than the, you know, self-defense that why don't we just try to recreate or reboot the Taiwan, Taiwan Strait situation back to a, a peaceful and friendly atmosphere? Mm -hmm. So in that case, that why do we have to defend, you know, to, 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 to stop them from happening in the first place? Mm -hmm. That's number one. Okay, now back to the, the conscription duration issue that, okay, whether it's a four month period or extension to one year, as a matter of fact, in the case of war, a battle is not enough, mm. it's not enough. Mm. I used to serve in the army. You mm. can tell, you know, I, I just review my age. Mm. <laughs> I served the army mm. for two years. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so I think Mr. Ke mentioned, okay, Ke mentioned earlier that if, if you talk about the, uh, this, the, uh, the, the self-defense for better defense, that one year is not enough, mm. which, which I agree. And also if I add up to one Mr. Ke's statement that some of the, uh, something missing here, mm -hmm. in addition to the, uh, the period Okay, extension, duration. The uh, matching measures, some of corresponding measures, such as what? National awareness. Mm. Did you create a national awareness? Mm -hmm. National awareness and then lead to national consensus that, mm. including the, the people and the youth, men and women, mm. okay, men in, in, in the soldier, uh, in the uniform that we have to, okay, we have to you know, we'll extend the period mm -hmm. to a one year time. Also, mm -hmm. not only that, also the, the uh, some of the basic training, you know, mm -hmm. necessary training, mm -hmm. and also the, uh, also the combat readiness, mm -hmm. some of the educational training mm -hmm. need to be uh, mm -hmm. mentioned about. So mm -hmm. now it's not talk about single, you know, so simplify the issue, the short or long mm -hmm. period. Should have the whole package. That's right, whole package right. has mm -hmm. to be, you know, has to be mm -hmm. formulated. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, uh, you know, if I may say, no, it's no offense that DPP has been too shallow. Okay, to rush to, to, to mm -hmm. the conclusion. Mm -hmm. I think something more needs to be done mm -hmm. to build a national mm -hmm. consensus in mm -hmm. this regard. Mm -hmm. Want to respond very quick? Yeah. Well, I think it's a very serious issue mm -hmm. to talk about Taiwan's self-defense. Mm -hmm. And by help us to e equip, it doesn't mean that we don't want peace and stability. Mm -hmm. We continue to push for st p p peace and stability for, for years. Mm -hmm. But what we it doesn't mean that we can just sit here and wait for peace mm -hmm. and stability to, mm -hmm. to arrive. So all this um, preparation, mm -hmm. we have to, I have to once again emphasize all the countries, mm -hmm. Japan, Philippines, Korea, mm -hmm. are Although doing the same thing. thing. Yeah. That, but it doesn't mean anyone would like to initiate mm -hmm. a war all right. against okay. China. All right, um, let's move from the defense to uh, trade. Since 2016, Taiwan's trade dynamic has uh, undergone a notable transformation. The country is heavily reliant on China, but has been actively diversifying its trade partnership with other countries and the regions. Help us analyze each candidate's outlook uh, on Taiwan's trade policy. Maybe we go, uh, you know, from KMT. Uh, uh, my understanding that Mr. Ho is looking forward a more diversifying mm -hmm. economic and trade environment for Taiwan. Mm -hmm. That being said, you know, mainland China remains the most important trade partner mm -hmm. for Taiwan, mm -hmm. and ECFA 
is you know something that should be kept mm -hmm. and these uh, the unfinished components mm -hmm. of ECFA must move on you know that's what I, I my, my guess is that's what he would like to do and and also he would like to see a greater participation of Taiwan in regional economic cooperation mm -hmm. mechanisms mm -hmm. like CPTPP mm -hmm. and if RCEP welcomes Taiwan, mm -hmm. then why not? Mm -hmm. As long as Taiwan can join RCEP or CTPPP in a fair uh, and, and very uh, um, apolitical mm -hmm. condition. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but, but that's you know, something ha uh, that has to do with cross rates mm -hmm. because both CPTPP and RCEP you know, have to do with the condition, the quality of cross relations. Mm -hmm. So if cross relations are not good, then I think Taiwan's hope for joining our support CPTPP will be very, very small. What about the cross-trade uh, service trade agreements? Uh, if, if Ho got elected, is going is he going to kind of get a back? My hunch is that uh. you know, since this this is part of ECFA, mm -hmm. you know, ECFA is right. the framework. Mm -hmm. So the trading service agreements must be continued mm -hmm. in order to build up what people has ne have negotiated over ECFA. Mm -hmm. And so uh, cross relations can have a better safeguard mm -hmm. uh, in terms of not only trading goods, but also trading service. Mm -hmm. DSG Yang, I believe that DBP is very different in this regard. Um, That's right. Explain that. Yeah. Oh, well, w as we can see that in um, 2010, our outbound foreign investment mm -hmm. is t uh, it China takes 83.8% of our total outbound foreign mm. investment. Mm -hmm. By 2022, it already reduced to 31.8%. Uh, mm -hmm. So it is very clear that uh, the DPP government is moving, shifting our economic dependence mm. from China uh, in, in a very strategic way. Mm. Our southbound policies and also our investment in mm. Europe and to the U.S. Mm. It is very uh, important that we realize that uh, China is not a secure place for uh, investments. Mm -hmm. Our government is aware of that. Our business people are aware of that. Mm -hmm. So all this uh, Taiwanese business investment are uh, coming either back to Taiwan mm -hmm. or finding other destinations for investment. Mm -hmm. This is a very successful um, result mm -hmm. that we do not put all eggs in one basket, in, in a Chinese basket. Mm -hmm. Then um, it is also a signal that indicates the Taiwanese business people understand the regulation environment mm -hmm. in, Ta in China is no longer um, a safe place for investment. Mm -hmm. And also after COVID-19 pandemic, the changing policies and also the economic potential re recession in China mm -hmm. would uh, have the business people have second mm -hmm. concerns. Mm -hmm. So Vice President Lai's uh, proposition is very clear that we need to be more economically engaged mm -hmm. with the world, like C either to join CPTPP or to have uh, bilateral trade relations with other countries. Mm -hmm. We need to help the business people and investments to have a comfortable and safe uh, investment destinations mm -hmm. other than China. Mm -hmm. And based on so yeah. do you think that it's legit for DBP always to try to detour China and to get connected with the world? I mean, what's TPP's understanding of this? Well, uh, mm. first of all, the, um, Mr. Ke has been of the opinion, obviously, in public, that he is for the, uh, okay, mm. for the, uh, for mm. the service trade mm. in agreement mm. with, uh, with mainland China. And also, the, uh, uh, although you know, DPP you know, under you know, in the Trump administration has repeatedly saying that you'd like to uh, detour the rate, but nothing has been done. Look at the trade volume. Mm -hmm. Okay, you, with between the two sides of Taiwan Strait, it keeps going up. Mm. It keeps going up. Mm. So, and the DP, uh, the DPU government, uh, seems to uh, have done nothing about mm. that. Mm. Although it keeps saying, but the, the, the words is one thing, but mm. the action is another one. Mm -hmm. And also that the, uh, I would like to say that, uh, although about the issue, be, be between the decoupling China or okay, over dependence on the Chinese market, I would like to say I think uh, that the, you know the Mr. Ke is of opinion that we like to keep. Uh, Maintain a certain uh, balanced, okay, and uh, healthy mm. and uh, rational mm. re trade relations 
with, with China. Mm -hmm. It is not a dichotomy. Mm -hmm. It's not a dichotomy. Mm -hmm. Either you rely on 100% rely on the Chinese market, mm -hmm. or you detour. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's a zero-sum game. Mm -hmm. it, it doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. We should have a healthy and balanced trade relations mm -hmm. with, uh, with China. Meanwhile, we have to uh, you know, beef up our efforts mm -hmm. to have integration with the rest of the okay. global community. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Any candidates to secure election, they must address the issue of semiconductors, which is the strength of Taiwan, an area in which Taiwan possesses significant expertise. Right now, prominent semiconductor or companies like TSMC are left wondering whether to maintain cheap sales and manufacturing operations in China or opt for a complete uh, dissociation from China, channeling their focus on selling and manufacturing chips in the United States. So uh, finally, a really quick, uh, uh, Professor Huang, so could you help us understand uh, KMT's policy in this regard? I haven't seen a very explicit statement from mm -hmm. Mr. Ho about this, but I think he would be in support of this ongoing policy that is Taiwan should be in cooperation with the US in a lot of in a lot of uh, chip industries mm. and uh, industrial corporations. While Taiwan should uh, put much attention to its own business, mm -hmm. that is, Taiwan needs to do business both with the US and with mainland, mm -hmm. while Taiwan uh, has to uh, keep very cautious mm -hmm. of this national security concern mm -hmm. so that Taiwan's sales, chip sales to mainland China will not danger the national security of the, the Republic of China and mm -hmm. the US. Mm -hmm. DSG Yang. Yes, um, William Lai, Vice President, he uh, was very he was very uh, keen to develop uh, our semiconductor industry. So mm -hmm. there was a new factory mm -hmm. in, in China when he was in a China city mayor. Then uh, semiconductor is actually our strategic. Uh, tools mm -hmm. and it, sh it is a protected industry. Mm -hmm. Then we have to be very careful with the world's attention how Taiwan is able to provide uh, mm -hmm. great quality mm -hmm. semiconductor to the mm -hmm. world. So we uh, looking at a lot of potential partners mm -hmm. from different countries, German, Germany, and also uh, U.S., mm -hmm. Japan, seeking for further and strengthen the okay. cooperation between mm -hmm. Taiwan and uh, semiconductor industry. In this episode, we examined each candidate's approach to cross-trade and foreign policy. It offers a valuable resource for Taiwanese voters, enabling them to swiftly comprehend each candidate's platform. Moreover, it serves as a useful tool for our international audience, providing valuable insights into the global perspective of the candidates in the events of their election. Did you enjoy this episode? Feel free to leave a comment on our YouTube channel and do not forget to hit the subscribe button. Until next time, take care.